hard. Hey, stop yelling, dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. It's episode 52 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel Lyrics. I'm Alex. And I am Jim. And this is episode 52. I'm not sure 53. That. Not 53. Nope, that's next week. If you get very excited about our show and you download it immediately, Briefly, you saw last episode mislisted as episode 52. It was episode 51. Right. Because and the song consciously, was. huh? Well, you got to tell them what the song was. And it's get it right the first time. <laughs> and subconsciously, I'm incapable of getting any aspect of that episode right the first time. <laughs> It's yeah, when somebody yells at you to do something like that, um, you know, it's counterproductive. Yeah, it's like yelling, uh, don't panic. Yo, yeah, and you're for yeah. sure gonna panic. Nothing makes me panic faster. Yeah, my wife. So, this is the thing my wife does, and I bet I bet you've done this too, but I don't, I try not to do this. Is that little coincidences will happen, and she'll wonder what it means. Ah, sure. She sees meaning everywhere. Now, I'm <laughs> different. I don't see it anywhere. Uh -huh. so, but so if something like that were to happen, she'd say, Ooh, well, what does that mean? And I'll go, Well, it means that I make mistakes. Doesn't mean anything else. Right. I mean, I make mistakes all the time, but right for one week, the spotlight was on mistakes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So they Whereas, got noted. Yeah, normally we just, it's just background noise, the mistakes. <laughs> so I had a great week. Here's what happened to me. Tell me what uh, happened. I'm curious. I am, so a lot of times I'm behind the curve as far as we were talking about this, like Lizzo is fantastic. Right. She's amazing. I didn't know that. Right. You knew she like existed. Yes. Right. Okay. But I had never listened to her music just because it had never come up and I had never accidentally heard her music, which should have happened. Yeah, that's weird. But it didn't. And it's because I don't really listen to uh, the radio. I don't listen to music where somebody else is choosing something for me to listen to okay. anymore. We don't have to and do that is, anymore. Huh? We don't have to do that anymore. Exactly. In these modern times. And there's something to be said for that. There is a value to it that I forget about, which is learning new stuff. <laughs> yeah, I agree. TV's even like that. Like, you used to have to try to watch TV. And, okay, the show I like is on at this time. But now I can just keep watching Airplane. And <laughs> yeah. It'll make me happy. I do like uh, Netflix now has that feature where uh, it used to be you would have to hunt down something. And now there's a button on the home page that uh, is, I don't remember exactly what it says, but it's like, just put something on. Oh, really? Just play something. Oh, and great. Just do that. I can't remember what the name of the button is. Someone will tell us, I'm sure. And um, does so it can, always so play? I just want something on. And then you might discover something or you might just be annoyed that that got made. Yeah. Which is most, that's my default position. <laughs> Either great or I'm mad that it got made. So here's a show I thought I was going to think was great. It's not great. And it's made by nice people, some SNL alums. Um, is it cake? Is not good. Oh, yeah. But yeah. Did you think it might be? So here's what I thought. <laughs> I thought there were enough funny people on the show involved in creating it that they do a version of that kind of show that was uh, irreverence, not the right word, but yeah, like clever, a, a just, historical version of it. Right. But they went they were, right at it. 
Yeah. And what you realize is, you know, it doesn't really matter. I, in a way, I guess this could be encouraging. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how clever anybody is. If their budget's not good enough, it's just going to be this good. Yeah. There's a limit to what you can pull off. Yeah. So um, most of the time it's not cake because yeah. uh, cake's too expensive. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, it's just a book. All yeah. right. Next thing. Now, hey, that should have been an episode where none of them were cake. <laughs> just a, yeah, that would keep you coming back. Where they were just dicking with the contestants. Now, one of these is a cake. No, nah, none of them was a cake. I mean, the great thing to do would be 10 episodes and it's never cake. <laughs> and then at the end of the season, you just go, well, we answered the question. Nope. And it's Not never cake. cake. Nothing's cake. <laughs> Alternate one episode where all of them are shaped like cakes. Oh, yeah. But only one of them's a cake, and the other ones are made out of other things. See, we're, this is already a, a really good pitch meeting. And some of the other things will hurt you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a bomb. Yeah, it's a bomb. Some One of them, if you cut into it, gas comes out. Oh man, like just like in the old Batman cartoons. Yeah, exactly. And one of them is a cake. Wow, but <laughs> the other hook the survivor, is uh, the survivors can enjoy the cake. Yeah. The other yeah. hook too is the cake. It's not very good. <laughs> oh yeah. That's uh, the question beyond is it cake? It becomes like, is it good cake? Yeah. Most of the time, too, the shoe-shaped cake, it was like, I bet that's not a good cake because you had to make everything thick and hold together like a shoe. Was... We, um, at our show, made a joke about peeps uh, five years ago. And every Easter, they send me a giant uh, suitcase size box of weird peep products. And usually it's just like different shapes and stuff. Sure. And this year it was peeps and then peep gummies and peep nail polish which i don't know what that means it tastes like marshmallows wow uh, and they sent cake mix peep and cake just, uh, well, every cake is better than any peep yeah so what do you what game are you getting into stay in your peep lane so peeps and uh candy corns nobody likes them right i like candy corn i have a friend who likes both those things oh both is crazy yeah heaps are fine just uh, very unnecessary i think yeah a, they, got a, they got a nice little lane where it's like oh easter and pe people like the peeps you put them in a basket it looks cute but you don't yeah. eat it right yeah, the problem with a peep is a peep is made out of an ingredient that will complete another dessert. Yeah. It's not really a dessert to itself. It's. Can you make s'mores with peeps? You fucking could. That'd be horrifying to children. Yeah, shit, that would be good though. Ooh, man. Almost makes it worth having kids, but it's not. But yeah, what. Don't do it. What you could do is take a chocolate bunny, a peep. Oh. Yeah, now what's the graham cracker? Because you get, what's, what the hell is graham cracker? Oh, yeah, cracker? Uh, gingerbread man or something. A gingerbread man. No, no, no. The <laughs> flavor's wrong. The flavor profile's off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> close, though. That's close. What Teddy, Teddy Grahams. Do you have Teddy Grahams? Teddy Grahams is close. Do you get any graham flavored anything for Easter? No, huh? No. Well, we are close on this. We are close. We, we are, are close, close to unlocking this. We're just about. Yeah. We're taking this more to it. This is like the crypto version of s'mores. We are never talking about this song. Oh. <laughs> so anyway, I, you were saying nostalgia. <laughs> yeah. Oh. What was I saying? Oh, just that nostalgia just as always, you're never going to, 
nobody cares about the dumb thing you remember because they're remembering their own dumb thing. That's the problem with nostalgia in general. Um, I'll tell you, the only thing I like about nostalgia is the knowledge that uh, the root of that word, alja, uh, means pain in Latin. Because you, you will hear that root in like neuralgia, <laughs> which means uh, nerve pain. Oh. So it's not just remembering the past, but also having a painful feeling about it. So that I enjoy, that that meaning got subverted. That's pretty great. That is pretty damn great. And relevant to the song. It is, because <laughs> we are, uh, by the way, so here's what I got this week, COVID. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. How was it? Uh, so far, great. It's been lingering so long. It's great. Oh, man. How did you find out? So last week, we did our show. I don't think I got it from our show. Um, <laughs> so the next day, I went, my wife and I went and played tennis. And I, I have to stress, by the way, that when I tell you that my wife and I played tennis, we're really... We're really playing loose with the definition of tennis when I gotcha. say this. The game we're playing is has qualities in common. All the equipment's the same. Gotcha. The location's the same. But what we're doing isn't tennis, really, but it's something to do. And <laughs> I was getting winded so quickly. And I thought, well, gosh, oh. I'm really old, I guess. But I'm like, that happened pretty fast. I don't remember getting this winded at stuff and I just felt really run down and then the next day just felt very much that feeling you get when you get the flu or anything where you feel like somebody hit you with a truck just everything's yeah. all achy and stupid and leaky and yuck and it didn't <laughs> make sense to me and it didn't occur to me that it could be COVID I thought my allergies were just on fire oh yeah I have this great thing that happens, by the way, like if I get, if I get, if I were to break a leg, I uh -huh. would go, well, I don't know what's wrong, but it's not my leg. Oh, That's wow. me. So I'm really good at that stuff. So <laughs> never occurred to me COVID that I took a test and yep. And fever, chills, uh, loss of sense of taste and smell, all the what? classics. You really got it. Now are you boosted? But, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I'm doing great as far as that goes because I didn't go to the hospital. I nope. didn't have to get intubated or anything like that. Right. You know, didn't have to have any horse pills, all the good stuff people do. <laughs> None of that. Um, but yeah. So it's been a fun week. Wow. Yeah. And uh, I was hoping I'd be done today. I took the test, still have it. Yeah. So still have to quarantine for at least five more days or until I get an all clear test. I'm worried that your tennis game is going to suffer <laughs> from, from this layoff. Yeah, that's true. That's so frustrating. I just got back in the game too. <laughs> no, man. Dude, I've done that so many times. This was the other thing I did. Like uh, towards the beginning of the pandemic, I decided to start running. And so I was running say five miles a day and getting in pretty good shape knee went out okay oh, so yeah. running let's play some tennis covid <laughs> <laughs> oh, nobody got, wants to. or jim's got covid elbow yeah <laughs> nobody <laughs> wants jim to get in shape <laughs> that is the harder thing about getting in shape as you get older so you keep getting sidelined yep I was doing great, blew out my knee. But dude, I was in my 20s and I decided to take up martial arts. And I started to do it pretty seriously in my 20s. And I, I competed in a and I comp competed in a few tournaments, practiced all the time, then got hit by a drunk driver and <laughs> jacked up my knees so bad that I couldn't do anything for months and months and months and months. And by the time I got better, I didn't feel like doing martial arts because I hadn't done it in a while. Yeah, you lose momentum pretty easily. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm not a momentum guy and I need, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm really good at inertia. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So good at that. <laughs> Here's what you picked, the song you picked. And oh, by the way, I was going to say the wrong song too. Oh, great. <laughs> I was going to go, this week Alex picked an innocent man. Well, no, you didn't. No. But you picked a song off of the album, An Innocent Man. And you picked a banger, Keep in the Faith. Keep in the Faith. A it's banger. a good song. Good old song. Yeah. It's a, it's a bop. It really is. <laughs> I mean, pretty literally. Yeah. It's yeah. It's, a, it's the last song, I think, on the album. I believe you are correct. Here's the funny um, thing about this song. I thought this seems to happen to me more than it should. Where I'll think, well, I don't think that's it. I don't know if I like that song for some reason. And then yeah. I listen to the song and I go, oh, that's a great song. Yeah. What's wrong with you, Jim? Why, why did you think you didn't like that song? Have some faith in yourself, Jim. Yeah. Acquire uh, some before you can keep it. I like this song because it's the last song, you know, it's on an innocent man, which is all nostalgia. Yep. All uh, attempts at sounding like Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons and or Stevie Wonder and uh, other musical influences from his youth. And then this is the yeah. last song, which I can't tell if it sounds like anybody in particular, but it is sort of a closing argument for the album. Yeah. It's a, for nine songs, it's like I'm doing nostalgia. And then the last song is like, all right. I'm going to talk about nostalgia. Yeah. And a lot of weird mixed feelings about this. Which is how you have, which is definitely how nostalgia is. Sure. Yeah, I love it. Is. Would I do it again? No. Would yeah. I do it the same? No. Do I remember yeah. the bad stuff? Not as well. <laughs> if I, uh, I have that thought a lot. If I could relive the past, and the answer is always no, because I know that I would fuck it up. That's what I know. Right. I feel like uh, in a lot of ways, we barely made it out. Yeah. Again, why do you want to go back into that burning building? Yeah. Your pre-knowledge would make it terrible. Yes. Danger around every corner. And you would jack things up so badly because you'd be trying to fix it. So badly. I have, so, you know, I, have the, I have such fond memories of Chicago because I think both you and I were young men in Chicago at one point. Yes. And uh, I, I have some very specific memories around a specific girl. Uh-huh. And you know the girl. Lovely person. Yes. If I knew then what I know now, I, we definitely would have done certain things, but it would have been a mistake. <laughs> yeah. And there's and but I but if I had that knowledge, there's no way I'm not doing it. <laughs> right. Yeah, you would be acting against your own interests, but you would know it. Yep. So That's you would no have problem. to. So not knowing gives you the benefit of just this nice, warm, fuzzy feeling. Oh, I wish I could go back. Thank God I can't. Yeah, there's a really smart design that you can't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, be a, a tremendous flaw in the system if you could go back. Have you ever read the book, The Man Who Folded Himself? I have not. It's a good book. I recommend it for everybody. It's related to the topic we're on. So cool. Uh, this, there's <laughs> about this guy who has a bunch of money because he, for some reason, he's inherited money, but he never questions why. He just knows he has money, but, it, but he doesn't live rich. And it doesn't occur to him that, well, why don't I live rich if I have so much money? He's just kind of aimless. And one day his uncle, who has basically been the caretaker of his money dies and leaves him the fortune. He finally gets the fortune. And the fortune is like $6,000. <laughs> And he's like, it's supposed to be, I, I have like a million dollars. I was like, no, I don't know why you thought that. 
I mean, look where you live. Now, why did you think you had a bunch of money? Well, it turns out that what he has is his uncle has a, a belt that lets you travel through time. <laughs> and he met, and he realizes, oh, this must be how my uncle made his money. He would just make a little bit of money at a time betting on horses or whatever. <laughs> and uh, oh boy, I really want to give it away, but maybe, you know, fuck it, you're not going to read the book. In the end, it turns out he's his uncle. <laughs> and he keeps going back and rewriting his own past. Right. But he fucks it up pretty good. It's pretty entertaining. That's fantastic. And there's one scene where he fucks himself. <laughs> it's really <laughs> funny. Oh my God. I know. It, it gets very weird. Yeah, I'd say. All right. You know what? I think you got to read it anyway, because I promise you it's fucking weird. <laughs> and it's because he says he's the one person he who think he thinks understands him <laughs> and funnily enough isn't that just the least true thing it's probably the person yeah. who understands you the least so we oh. picked keeping the faith <laughs> <laughs> keeping by, the faith uh, by billy joel oh good and uh, thank, God. thank I, God it's Billy Joel. Yeah, not the one by uh, Carol King. <laughs> uh, so, oh, by the way, uh, I like the design. I'm looking at the album cover right now. And uh, yeah. I like the design of the stoop he's on. I wonder where that's at. It's a fine question. I don't have the answer to. Okay. I'm on a different I lyric page because I don't have a stoop. Yeah, I'm at uh, billyjoel.com backslash song backslash keeping the faith dash seven. That's where I am. <laughs> ah. uh, August 8th, 1983 was when this was released. Oh. I started last time and uh, you picked a song. So why don't you get us going? I'll start this time. Yeah. I'm remembering this is the last song on the album. It makes these opening lines funny to me if it seems like i've been lost in let's remember yes it does it does seem it like really that it does seem that way if you think i'm feeling older and missing my younger days yeah and that's what i'm getting from you <laughs> then you should have known me much better huh because my past is something that never got in my way oh no oh no Oh no, I do like uh, if, if it seems like I've been lost in Let's Remember. That's fantastic. That's a great uh, phrasing. It's Nobody not calls hamstrung. that. I, for me, great phrasing is I've never heard it said that way, but I instantly know what you're talking about. Yep. And it doesn't uh, feel like he's trying too hard with that phrase either. No, and it seems like a very derogatory way to talk about nostalgia. Yeah. Ooh, let's remember. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like it. I do too. I don't and know what it, he's getting at with, like, if you think that's what I'm doing, then you should have known me much better. My past is something that never got in my way. I guess so. Uh, you know, just you objectively standing outside and going, is that true about Billy Joel? And I think maybe it is because, you know, you got sick in New York, you went to LA, you went, oh, to hell with this, I'm going home. And, and it never mattered to him too much what record he had to make at that point. Yeah. I, I, I'd buy that. I guess so. I don't know what it means, though. Yeah. Um, I guess he means he doesn't get hung up on remembering the past and is moving yeah. forward. It feels yeah. defensive, and I don't know what he's defending. Yeah. Now, interestingly enough, he, he right away, I think we get a clarification because maybe what he seems to be saying is, you think that I've been reminiscing because I miss it. Ah, uh, yeah. Still, I would not be here now if I never had the hunger. And I'm not ashamed to say the wild boys were my friends. 
I think he means Wham, right? The Wild Boys. <laughs> that song Wild Boys was his friend. Wild Boys. Wild Boys. <laughs> or was that Duran Duran? That might have been Duran Duran. It sounds right. <laughs> uh, oh, actually, they both. So they both had that. Uh, Wham was the Bad Boys, and Duran oh. Duran was the Wild Boys. <laughs> <laughs> So nobody basically is ashamed to say that they associated with the Wild Boys. No. So it's not much still, of a... I would, still, I would not be here now if I never had the hunger. I do like that. I wouldn't, wouldn't have gotten to this point if I hadn't... Well, I mean, but it's not that deep, but still. I wouldn't have got here if I didn't want it. <laughs> right. Not, not ashamed to say the wild boys were my friends of all because I never felt the desire till their music set me on fire. Hey, now I think we both know who he's talking about. And then I was saved. Yeah, that's why I'm keeping the faith. He's talking about black artists. Oh, he just is because I Great. never felt in a very nice, respectful, hey, man, do I owe you guys. Oh, I like that. And right into a gospel line, which right. tells you that's who he's talking about. And then I was saved, yeah, that's why I'm keeping the faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like this particular appeal to gospel. It doesn't seem over the top. It's nope. not offensive. Nope, it's damn it i i i am this because those guys paved the way first i like it i didn't say that neither did i <laughs> it's just thinking about it in the within the con that's why it's fun to analyze the lyrics that's why we do it baby yeah you guys are wondering why we did the show that's why that and uh, inertia. And inertia. <laughs> or momentum. Whatever you like. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I do like the, uh, the metaphor of, uh, oh, the music is my religion. Yeah. Their, their music became my religion, and I'm keeping the faith. Yeah, and I was saved. There's so much to that. There's you also know, a little, like, here's why I'm still doing it. Yep. I have to keep this alive. Again, I'm going back to his acceptance speech for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame where he talked about growing up and not knowing any Black people and not thinking about why that was and then, and then the racial reason why yeah. Black folks couldn't get houses in that neighborhood and how yeah. I, a lot of artists, Paul McCartney's talked about this, a lot of artists have talked about like getting exposed to black artists on the radio and right. seeing this whole other world that they were insulated from in their little, you know, cocoon, the little white cocoon of just suburbia. Right. And that shit's real. That shit's real. Especially uh, Hicksville, Long Island, famously the first planned suburb. Tucson, Arizona, my friend. If, the plan you know, was black people out yeah tucson arizona getting exposed to prince yeah was huge and getting exposed to other just there's a song called free nelson mandela which was not as important now but yeah it was very important and i saw it on a night flight which was just dumb video program i love night flight me too I did not know who Nelson Mandela was. Right? And I became aware of yeah. this whole other world. And then you become aware, God, we're the worst, us <laughs> collective white folks. Yeah, we had some bad ideas. And you know, if it wasn't for songs like that, for real, it wasn't for songs like Free Nelson Mandela, making me aware that Nelson Mandela existed, he just would have been secretly murdered in prison like every other leader was yeah. until the world became aware they existed. Right. Although there are plenty the world is still not aware about. Yep. 
that continue to be <laughs> murdered in prison or out of prison. Yeah. Um, there's not enough songs to go around. No. But I, all of which is to say that I really do get the sentiment he's expressing. I, uh, I remember Morris Day at the time had this album called Jungle Love. And, sure. Uh, I liked the song. I did not know what Jungle Love was. <laughs> and years later, when I became aware of what the idea was, well, I just laughed and laughed at my younger self. Because <laughs> <laughs> it was right there. Yep. Yep. Oh. Did you find out what it was from the movie? Uh, I d but did the movie tell you what it was, really? They just um, sang it. The discourse, the discourse around the movie certainly did. Oh, did it? Oh, okay. There's a lot of, uh, that's when it really entered the vernacular. Yeah. And then very quickly became not a cool thing to say. <laughs> right, yeah. Probably all the best, the sort of exposed and dissipated. Oh, Morris Day. My favorite song by Morris Day at the time is this dumb song called The Walk, because it was supposed to be a new dance. Right, I know the one, You're t I can't remember how it goes, but yeah. It was <laughs> and it's it's supposed to be a, a dance, but he's just walking around on stage. <laughs> like, well, yes, I can do this dance. There's really nothing better. <laughs> There's nothing better than a, like trying to start a dance craze and it flops. Yeah, it was really, just really slightly better. You really put yourself out there. There's no way to look dumber. <laughs> We're like, yeah, come on, everybody, do the do the gym. I'm like, no, <laughs> no one's doing the gym. The, the first thing you do is you have an allergy to nuts. <laughs> Not a great song. Not All great right, song. you're up. <laughs> ah, now we're getting into specifics. Yeah, super yeah. specifics. Yeah, we wore, mat we wore matador boots. Only Flag Brothers had them with the Cuban heel. All right. Yep. Iridescent socks with the same color shirt and a tight pair of chinos. Yep. So you're you're showing your balls. Uh huh. <laughs> um, you know, I was listening to this earlier with Sue, and I said, "Hey, you know, the whole album is like '50s stuff," and then it was like, "This doesn't sound like '50s." Matador boots, iridescent socks with the same color shirt. I don't, was that a thing? 70s, right? 70s. Maybe. So this song is, came out in 83. So he's yeah. not casting his memory back that far. Oh, I put on my shark skin jacket. You know, the kind with the velvet collar. Yep. Giddy bop shades. Oh yeah. It's a strong, super specific look yeah. that I can't picture. I don't know about you. Can you picture it? It no, I'm not, not what a really. shark skin jacket looks like. I can picture someone looking stupid dressed this way. I can picture yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, that seems like you're trying super hard if you're going all the way to Flag Brothers. Yeah. For the very specific Cuban heel. For the Flag Brothers. I did look up Flag Brothers. It was a shoe company um, out of Puerto Rico. Oh, okay. It had stores in the US from what I saw was 68 to 73. Okay. So this is, that's interesting. So the album is this retro album to the artist that influenced him. But this song is about truly pertinent nostalgia for him for his recent youth. Yeah. His adult youth, I think. Yeah. This uh, is not when he was, like, <laughs> probably his first marriage at this point. Yeah. But it's those days that he probably, at this point, does romanticize a lot because it's him making it, not being an established artist, but a guy trying to be one. 
Right. Although we're going to learn in the next verse, he still lives with his dad. Or his dad keeps his rubbers at his house. That's a, that's, that's a system. Wow. <laughs> you wow. Don't want your, I don't want your mom to find these. Can you mind <laughs> keeping them in your house? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I think it's very typically, it's it's a lot like Brenda and Eddie. Where if you look at it too long, hard, you're like, man, this the era just jumps around yeah it, it's a little bit of that so it's it's painting a picture which he always does without much without absolutely rooting it in an absolute time which i think actually works fine for this song uh, we, we can let him off the hook by saying that that's how nostalgia kind of works anyway true it's like oh you'll remember stuff in the wrong era I'd be like, oh, I remember when I dated Debbie in Seattle. And then you're like, wait, no, I lived in Seattle before I met Debbie. It all kind of becomes yeah. a jumble in your head of just yeah. like the old time. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, there will be times where I'm like, oh, I remember that great thing that happened when I was young. And then I'll remember, nope, I was 43 when that happened. Yeah which is uh, still a long time ago. <laughs> Hence the uh, stress test. I took a fresh pack of Luckies and a mint called Sen Sen, which I'm not familiar with that mint. Are you? I know. Okay. Uh, I looked it up. It's licorice flavored. Oh. So it's mint is maybe not the right word. Yeah. I think the word you're looking you're, the word you're looking for is gross. That's, yeah. That sounds terrible. My old man's Trojans and his old spice aftershave. Now, I want it, so you could, we'll do it in little pieces like this because I just want to say I've always found the old timey references to your dad giving you rubbers disgusting. Yeah. It's always bothered me. First of all, is it a used rubber? No, no, right? So why is it your old <laughs> man's Trojan? Because did you steal them from him? Is that what happened? That's my presumption. That and why does your dad have out. them? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why weird. Why your dad got rubbers? Yeah, that's weird. And Old Spice. Well, my, my dad had Old Spice. Yeah. But uh, not rubbers <laughs> that I know of. Yeah, it's such a weird of its. Well, that whole thing where your old man will buy you a hooker kind of thing, and the, that you, yeah. you see you number one first you see represented, but number two talking to other dudes who are older than me happened. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, it. It was talked about and quickly. So just made, <laughs> yeah, so it made sense to people back then that this is a thing you do. Yeah, there was a weird thing where dads had to make sure that their sons uh, fucked the lady. Yeah. With some kind of like gay test, maybe. <laughs> or like a rite of passage. Do you think it is because you had two things coming butt up against each other, which is you have a culture that has made it virtually impossible for a woman to safely express the, the fact that she's a sexual being because you're uh -huh. just a whore. And then also, but we're human beings and we kind of like to have sex. So here's the solution, dudes. Instead of having a nice romantic relationship, I'm getting you a hooker because... I can't, we couldn't possibly just have an adult conversation about needs. <laughs> right. No, we don't talk. When you call, uh, you got enough money? All right, here's your mom. That's our conversation. Right. Yep. So, uh, uh, I'll just leave the rubbers out and hope for the best. Yeah. Um, when I was of... Uh, you know, fooling around age as a teen, 
At one point, I acquired a bunch of uh, Trojans, and my, not for my dad. I bought them myself. Good job. And I had them in my room in a drawer. And one day I got home and my room had been cleaned by my mom and I looked in the garbage and there were the Trojans. And I was like, <laughs> well, I guess, I guess we just don't say anything to each other. So this should be fine. And then later on, they were back in my drawer again. Oh. And I was like, okay, well, what does this mean? And I found out years later that what it meant was conversations between my sister and my mom that went back and forth Jimmy's got Trojans. I'm throwing them away. My sister, well, he's trying to be responsible. Do you want him to have kids? Oh, okay, uh, I'm putting them back. <laughs> <laughs> it's all just in your periphery. Yep. No, one's no conversation to... ever had. Oh, boy. And what I really, it's too bad I never got to yeah. tell my mom, hey, mom, don't worry. I never got to use them. <laughs> they're still in the drawer oh yeah those were that was a 12 pack of optimism that's what that was yeah, those were aspirational rubbers yeah <laughs> somebody let you do it once instead of buying one or three you got 12 you never know there might not surely, be time to run out for more surely this is going to be an everyday occurrence now uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. And the old spice aftershave, that's fine. But I don't like the old man's Trojans. But that was a real thing. People did that. It was a real thing. Look it up. Yep. This next part's okay. You go ahead. Oh, uh, comb my hair in a pompadour like the rest of the Romeos wore. A permanent wave. Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> Again, it feels like now we've gone back to the 50s. Yeah. So I don't know where we are. Did you ever do something like that with your hair? The pompadour? Close. Yeah. Yeah, pretty close. We did a lot of bad idea experiments. Like when I was a, a young man, um, there was a cool thing you would do where you cut all this hair really short and keep this part long. Yep that it would make like a weird mushroom shape. Um, and <laughs> uh, Paul Goebel made fun of me a lot when I was experimenting with that because there was a show that was a spinoff of 21 Jump Street called Booker. And Booker had really cool hair and I tried to make my hair do that. <laughs> Booker had the advantage of uh, not having waves in his hair. <laughs> yeah. So when I did it, it just was a big wavy mushroom head and um, there was not enough product in the world to make it uh, stay. I so always now we're here. Man, yeah, I always wanted like a Danny Zuko or something like that, but I'm blonde. <laughs> yep. And it's it it's more or less always done exactly what you see it doing now. <laughs> um, I always remember what uh i think it was fish karma said you looked like do you remember this you I did stand up. Uh, and you came off the stage after your stand-up which went mediocre i think and he said hey uh jim bruce everybody doesn't he look like martin mull with aids i do remember that <laughs> i didn't remember it was fish karma who said that that's great i think it was yes <laughs> oh, that's great yeah i do remember that and he wasn't wrong he wasn't wrong it was pretty great uh, not oh. not cool to do an aids joke could yeah. have just said any martin mall but uh, uh, that was the edgy thing then was to uh, go yeah hey aids yeah still pretty funny <laughs> as it turns out it's funny too because I didn't have that coming. <laughs> no. <laughs> it was just yeah. uh, the uh, thing he I thought did. of. Yeah. He's like, uh, I can't think of this and not say it out loud. Yeah. What kind of person would not say this? What kind of host would I be? 
Uh, uh, shall I go away. in the bridge? Yeah, go ahead. You can get just so much from a good thing. You can linger too long in your dreams. Say goodbye to the oldies but goodies. Because the good old days weren't always good. And tomorrow ain't as bad as it seems. That's great. That's a lot of uh, lovely aphorisms. Yeah. But don't Nothing deep. I do like that he's, you know, spent a whole album being very nostalgic. And then he's like, eh, the good old days weren't always good. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. This particular chorus or bridge should be sung to every old idiot in this country right now. Yeah. Yep. Good old days weren't always good. A lot of people uh, don't want to believe that. Yeah. I would go so far as to say there were no good old days. Yeah. Yeah, so there's... Somebody always points this out. Uh, My friend recently pointed this out. You can talk about how bad things are too, but today is almost universally always the best time in history. And just remember that. Yeah. And it ever has always been true because all the nonsense you had to do to get to here has been done. And yes, yes, here's your set of nonsense you're going to have to do to get us to the next thing. Yeah, but think of all the things that are, are prefabbed for you. Yeah. But people aren't good at that. They're not good at thanking their lucky stars for various things. Just go drink a clean glass of water and the rest (laughs) of your complaints are worthless. Yeah, that is uh, such a monster step in human evolution that you are not even noticing. Yeah. I do always love it when people are like, oh, I, I wish I had been born in the Middle Ages. And I just wanted to be like, you haven't put your phone down in six days. Yeah. What chance would you have? I also wish you had just a teacher. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So ludicrous. I watched uh, the, the reboot of Nova with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. The whole, there's a whole episode on the guy who decided to put chlorine in water. <laughs> And that guy was a lunatic because he, because people were like, nah, you can't do that. And he was so sure he was right. He secretly put it in the water supply. And had he been wrong, he's history's greatest monster. (laughs) But now he's just a confident inventor. Yep. He's, he's why you can have water parks. So it's not all good. It's not all good. good old days weren't always good. <laughs> and so uh, I like this next here. Here's what we do. Man, a lot of lyrics, by the way. A lot uh, of lyrics. Learn stick ball as a formal education. I've always thought that was kind of stupid, but also great. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's funny that he decided stick ball. I wonder if he played stick ball. I don't think he did. I feel like he did stick- not. I think maybe he played baseball because by now you're playing baseball, not stickball. Because stickball is basically, hey, none of us can afford bats. And also, they don't really sell that at the store yet, right? Right. Stickball feels like the 40s in like New York City, not in the suburbs. Yeah. Because yeah, stickball is like when you see video of like, Poor African kids playing soccer with a homemade ball. <laughs> yeah. You had to. Lost yeah. a lot of fights, but it taught me how to lose okay. I like that. Mm-hmm. Oh, I heard about sex, but not enough. Oh, and also, by the way, the the bounce here. Heard about sex, but not enough. I like this whole part, even the way it's sung. I found you could dance and still look tough anyway. Uh, I like that <laughs> part a lot. Yeah. Uh, I, I like that he, just, uh, he doesn't try to be cute and say, like, I heard about girls. It's just like sex. Sex, yeah. Yep. Heard about sex. 
Yeah, Whatever this is a this is a truth. Yeah, weirdly, this is in some senses a truth telling song, even though there's no way you played stick ball, but <laughs> right. It's a, a uh, larger truth. Yeah, I found you could dance and still look tough anyway. And then it, you know, very cool. Oh, yes, I did. You should have found that out a little more with regard to talking, and you wouldn't be divorced as much, but that's all right. Sure, sure, sure. Oh, yes, I did. Yeah, still a work in progress, aren't we all? Uh, found out a man ain't just being macho. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, the this word next line is, yeah, this next line is just brutally true. Ate an awful lot of late night driving food, drank a lot of take home pay. I believe you. Yeah, <laughs> yes. I yeah. believe you did that, Mr. Joel. Oh. If anybody ever did. It was Otto was the Duke of Earl when I made it with the redhead girl. Now this line hits me because man, redheaded girls. Man. <laughs> Every any redheaded woman I've ever met that showed me any amount of interest, I was like, this is the best day of my life. It's the best. Yeah. It is there's something magical. Oh man, yeah. The, my <laughs> lovely friend Maria, what a nice lady. God loved her. She's a great person. <laughs> used, to, used to do comedy with her, and just for the record, nothing ever happened. I don't want to besmirch her but the uh, record show reputation, but just for the record, much to my disappointment. Because what a wonderful, hilariously mean lady god this is a great time for you to not be able to time travel yeah dude i would time travel to the exact same di day like 15 times <laughs> i think that's what we would all do we have maybe a selection of three different days no yeah, no just one one particular hot summer night Whew, my god yeah. Thought in I, the show of life. Yep. Thought I was the Duke of Earl when I made it with a redhead girl. What a beautiful line. It doesn't even feel sexist to me. It does. I hope it's not. It just feels romantic. Yeah. No, I think it, it, it is romantic. Yeah. It's, he's talking about, you know, how being with this girl made him feel like an amazing, like a superstar. The Duke yeah. of Earl again back to the 50s. We're all yeah. over the place wow. chronologically. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna keep going. That's part of Duke of Earl, by the way, is that the guy who wrote the song thought that a Duke Duke had a dukedom, and I don't think that's what a Duke has, right? I don't know. I don't think that's Sounds a real thing. Right. Do they have a duchy? They might have a duchy. Make sure. Say what happened? Okay, I'm talking now. There we go. I had to turn off the headphones. Uh -oh. The duchy. <laughs> it might be. Yeah. Maybe. Sound off in the comments. Yep. And tell, <laughs> tell us where they would pass it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, that's a beautiful little lyric. I, I got no problem with any of this. Um, and then, you know, the good old days weren't always good, and tomorrow is as bad as it seems. And you get to take us home. All right. I told you my reasons for the whole revival, which I love. Yeah. Now I'm going outside to have an ice cold beer in the shade. I'm going to listen to my 45s. Ain't it wonderful to be alive when the rock and roll plays? Yeah. When the memory stays. Yeah. I like that he uh, once again brought up revival. Yeah. Um, keeping the faith. It's a, a gospel move. And now I'm going outside. The guy who had a lot of late night driving food and drank a lot of take home pay definitely goes outside to have a beer in the shade. Yeah. And that's like the height of luxury when you're an old guy. Yeah. Like I've got two hours where I don't have to do anything. I'm going to drink a beer outside in the shade, and that's all you need. Yep. And he doesn't want to go out and party. 
He doesn't want to go out and go crazy. He's just no. glad he got to. Yeah. I'm going to listen to the music and remember that stuff instead yeah. of making a fool of myself at the club. Don't you get this feeling sometimes? Because uh, you have a lot of young friends. As, so do I. But you do, of course, in your business, you're going to have young friends. Sure. And, you know, there's this guy, Omar Nava. Omar now is one of the funniest dudes. He's just a little sweetheart of a man. He's just so funny. And for some reason, he calls me Papa Bruce because of when we met in comedy. <laughs> and uh, I, I think because I've always been very supportive of him and found him very funny, but he's quite a bit younger than me. And I just get a kick out of seeing him experience stuff. Yeah. Oh, that's great. He's now with a lady who I believe they're married now and seeing that happen was like really cool seeing him get little wins in comedy and like think man I said there's a guy who deserves some wins it's a neat thing to be at that age when you're not filled with hate <laughs> <laughs> yeah to be able yeah. to just watch people and go like Lizzo is a great example she I don't know that that music's for me Maybe it's for everybody, but but I mean, it's really for young people hitting an experience of specifically women too. But when I watch her just knock it out of the park, I'm so happy that there's young people who have that. Yeah. In there, and I'm like, okay, cool. Important good music is still being made and it's for you guys. Oh, I'm so happy. And yeah, absolutely. We got to uh, take um, my cousin's 16 year old daughter is a diehard Yankees fan. And um, I got Lauren Michaels seats. Oh my God. Which is first row behind home plate. And we got to take her to the game and just watch. And she, you know, she wept. She, the Yankees won. They came from behind and won the game. And it was like, this is great. And just to, yeah, just to bear witness to somebody having a moment they'll remember is good oh. enough baby yeah it really is better probably yeah you know i remember i got a i got to go on the field um at dodger stadium got to walk on the field dodger stadium for this event and that means exactly nothing to me other than it's beautiful sure but i brought a friend of mary joe's who's a lunatic dodger fan right and watched her cry and watched her, <laughs> you know, sit in the, because she got to sit in the booth where they did the announcements and stuff. It was a big tour. Yeah. Me being there was okay. My memory that I get to cherish is her. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And your it's memory is what you've got to do for this person. Yeah. It's a great design that uh, I think as you get older and you want to do and can do fewer things, you get better at living vicariously yeah. through other people's experiences. I'm like, oh, thank God. Yep. Because uh, <laughs> I, uh, my knees don't work so good, but I watch somebody else run and I'm like, oh, good for them. Yeah. <laughs> now, I legitimately want to thank you for something because I don't know I, that I liked this song that much before. I thought it was okay. I think I legitimately love this song now. It's pretty great. And breaking down the lyrics with you has been neat. This is a good song for what we do. Yes, there's a lot there. A lot of hyper-specific stuff. Yeah. And hidden from me, I'm sure a lot of people got it right away, but I didn't. But it, hidden from me is how there's this undercurrent, current, not present in a lot of Billy Joel songs. There's an undercurrent of sweetness in this song that just isn't in a lot of Billy Joel songs. Yeah, he really resisted uh, any gruffness. He, he, ain't, I mean. he ain't yelling at anybody. Nope. He's got a little bit of advice, but it's yeah. even really, you can tell it's not even like he's going, hey, the good old days weren't so great. He's not doing that. Nope. And he's saying, hey, the good old days weren't all that great. But I make that mistake. But also tomorrow's not as bad as it seems. It's, 
That's pretty wonderful. It's pretty wonderful. There's a lot of uh, gratitude in it. And you made a good point early on that now that I think about it, what a great way to make it a complete album. Yeah. Rather than just a collection of songs. Yeah, it's, it's kind of on the nose, but I don't mind it. Yeah. Because it is such a, a theme album. Yep. Musically, it ends nice, too. The song winds down really nice. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have a fade out, I don't believe. I think it does. It's a little nicer, though. It's not just there. kind of okay, and it's kind of that's nostalgic in its own way. Yeah. <laughs> For like listening to rock and roll on the radio. Yeah. What are the instruments we're using here? Because I could, I've never been quite sure. Because it's I'm not great at that. It feels electric. There's some horns. Yeah. There's some synthesizers. Yeah, I, it feels like horns. I guess the only thing that I've ever quibbled with the song is that it feels a little too manufactured given the era we're talking about. But too produced. Yeah, but that's ever always a problem. That's ever always a problem when you're trying to recreate another era because usually the equipment that they use doesn't exist. So. Oh yeah, it's very funny to go let back and listen to like uh, Buddy Holly songs. They're like, oh, these sound terrible. Yeah. I mean, they're great songs, but the recordings are like, oh, no. Yeah. All the, all the recordings from that era sound like if you got them today, you'd like, oh, this unknown guy made a mixtape. That's what they sound like. Yeah. Is this the demo from your basement? Yeah. Like, oh, this is what we're putting on the radio. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh. This is all the right. best product. That's rock but, and roll. But on the plus side, the radios were also shitty. So it didn't matter. <laughs> right. Yeah. You only had to live up to a certain fidelity. Yeah. It was going to come through in the worst. Uh, funnily enough, this thing behind me, not yeah. on purpose, could have been a reference to the song we're doing today. I was hoping it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, oh, man, what a stupid hint this is. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> You know the model of car. Yep. Yep. It's not the back seat, though. So you know that it's not this song. Oh, that's right. Um, this is Chevrolet. Three on the tree. Yep. And it's got a. Deep. And you can listen to a kind of music. Uh, you can listen to a way. There's a way to listen to music in here. Not just the kind of music, but you can listen to it on, a, on the radio. But you also have. On uh, yeah, on the radio. Well, and the, above the radio, oh, yeah. we got a tape deck. We do got a tape deck. Nice. Is that an eight track? Uh, mm. it okay. it's, definitely, it's definitely a tape deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, right. And, uh, and now that I realize, I wonder if this references like ninety songs, and I just picked one. Um, <laughs> I'm kind of wondering that. Um, yeah. I'm hearing, I'm thinking of Good Night Saigon. Yeah, it's not Good Night Saigon. Okay, because they um, something there was something about Hendrix tapes. Yeah, true. But no, it's the car and the meat. Uh -huh. Which is a Chevy. Yep. So you're playing tapes in your Chevy. Yep. Yep. Not Chevrolet. No. Does Chevy come up in another song? It does. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah. How about oh, I mean, Jeff. Well, I'll tell you what, is you're probably driving to buy drugs. <laughs> oh, yeah. So then you're probably playing your doors tapes. Oh uh, well, you both nope. <laughs> Oh, that's I'm back in Good Night Saigon again. Yeah, but you're probably buy, going to buy drugs, probably from, from a very specific guy. From uh, yeah, guy uh, Captain Jack. That's right, Captain Jack will get you high tonight. And why can't I remember the line with the tapes? Yeah, it's uh, well, well, I'll even look it up for us. I think I keep thinking Good Night Saigon because it's similarly mopey. Yeah, <laughs> mopey uh, and. Uh, uh, like an arena song. 
Let's see where the lyric is. <laughs> um, Captain Jack, go get your high tonight. Masturbate, toes. You got your tape deck and your brand new Chevrolet. Oh, man. But there's no place to go anyway. And what for? And what for? <laughs> <laughs> that's a very on the nose and i should have known that yeah but i decided to break with tradition and not make it linger i do that's a really dumb lyric too so you've got your tape deck and your brand new chevrolet i feel like you buried the lead yeah <laughs> you've got your brand new chevrolet featuring a tape deck yeah Oh, you got a tape deck? Yeah, it's in my Chevrolet. <laughs> well, you got a Chevrolet. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I got a trivia question for you. What a pretty car, in a way, though, huh? It's a, a the baby blue. It takes yeah. me seventies every time. I feel like it was a big color in the seventies. Yep, I wouldn't want this kind of car ever again. But what a pretty car! Yeah, it's too big. <sighs> My dad drove a Ford LTD, which is, <laughs> if you don't know what a Ford LTD is, imagine literally driving a boat down the street. Yeah. And we had a, a Mercury Marauder. Big old car. Big ass car. It was, it was one of like the five longest cars ever made or something. Yeah. Stupid. In you could fact, only have it in Arizona. Yeah. Imagine trying to park any of those sons of bitches anywhere now. They're borderline RVs. Yep. <laughs> yep. Stupid. Uh, all right, you got you got trivia for me, son. Yeah, man. And uh, I know you're a musical theater person to some degree, at least by proxy. Yeah, I like musical theater. I really do. Um, there is one Broadway musical in all of Broadway musical history that mentions the mint called Sen Sen. Oh, hold on a second. Um, and you name the musical and or the song. Guys and Dolls? No, but in the ballpark. I mean, obviously it's from an era. South Pacific. No. Okay, hold on a minute. All right, so we're in an era. God, wow. Greece. Not Greece. What? All right. Uh, <laughs> I'll give you a hint. I, I feel like you're having uh, trouble with this question. <laughs> and trouble starts with the T. Music man. Yeah, it's music man. Nice. That's right. And a bit, yeah, that's right. And they'll be using uh, words like bebop. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I'm a billiard man. Happy to say it. Happy to say it. But, I, but these guys are playing pool. Not like dignified. Oh, that's so great. Now I that's like right. horse racing. Teaches a good sense. But these are horse races where he sits right down on a horse. God, what a great musical. God. Great. Crazy song. Yes. Great, crazy song. I just watched Cecily Strong in um, uh, Schmidgerton. Is that what it's called? <laughs> Schmigadoon. 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 Yeah. Great. Why is she so great? <laughs> God. She's that still for that show. Everybody on that show knocks it out of the park. Are you kidding me? That thing is so great. And then the reason I thought of it is because they. Uh, what's your name? Who's the real? Who's got the real bona fides from what? Yeah, you know, from Broadway. Who's also in it? Um, oh, Chenoweth. Chenoweth. Yeah, she sings the um, song that's the ode to the Music Man. Right. They do a song that's essentially you got trouble right here, and but it's it's consternation. <laughs> it's, it's parody bordering on thievery. Yes, but Which very, is, yeah, very good version of it. Order. <laughs> yeah, Cecily Strong is somebody who snuck up on me because I saw her the first couple times I saw her in SNL. I'm like, oh, she's pretty funny. Yeah, and there were a couple times I was like, what the fuck is she doing now? 
What? Yeah. How, how dare you be this funny? So uh, see, yeah. See, she is a, she does sneak up on you. And yeah. She's so effortlessly brilliant. And she doesn't do a lot of impressions. So it's not like you're going to see right. that. And when she does impressions, they're more the kind of like, oh, they must have asked her to do this this week, not <laughs> right. this in her pocket. An assignment. Yeah. It's yeah. not like Melissa Zayas. What's. Via Senor? Via Senor. She was great this week, by the way. Yes. Finally, That's... actually found a way to That's... feature her. The update feature was amazing. It was perfect, yeah. And uh, she's one of the, she's somebody they don't know how to use all the time. But the yeah. cool thing is they seem to be sticking with her. And I'm glad they are. Yeah. She's so fucking great. She's a great kooky voice. Yeah. I mean, comedy voice and yes. actual voice. And actual voice, yeah. She was, <laughs> she was really great. Man, Keep in the Faith, what a good damn song. Good old song. And what a good piece of trivia. Nice job, by the way. Thanks, bud. Man, I enjoyed that a lot. And I so what'll happen, you know, sometimes we'll pick a song that's, hey, let's do this song because it's garbage. And that's fun. That's or, fun. And then he, let's do this song because I already love it. Well, that's going to happen a lot. This is a song. It ain't a hidden gem. It was a hit. But for yeah. some reason... I underappreciated it. Yeah, your your memory stashed it in the wrong bank. Yeah, which makes sense because I've had the COVID. Uh, that's what it is. Um, I've had verbal aphasia, by the way, for the last week, and now it's finally going away. And I thought, oh, no, I think something's really wrong with me. And I was really worried. I was actually really worried. Wow. And then uh, when I found out I got COVID, I was actually relieved. <laughs> <laughs> I really well, my god that is a great medical attitude to have and i'm going to try to take that with me into my appointment yeah well anything so i used to have this bit the bit goes like this i would just say hey what's your favorite std who had <laughs> what's your favorite std and then people sometimes people would say something i go mine mine is chlamydia mine's chlamydia because you take a pill about that big, yeah, he's fine. And that's my way of saying, "Hey, guess what? I got one time." <laughs> <laughs> gross, great. gross joke, but gross, but great. Based on a true story, <laughs> with a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, I don't think we, I don't think we've done this song. It's off of Stormfront. And so it goes. And so it goes. Oh, great. And shouldn't yeah. that be written with two dots in front of it? But it's not. But shouldn't it? Seems like it should. To go dot, 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 and so it goes. Yeah, I would think. Because you're starting with and. Yeah, you're right in the middle of something. Yeah. That's All what right. I'm picking. Um, I like it. How was, uh, how was your Easter? Fine. We had brunch in Chappaqua. Nice. And uh, had too much champagne. So I had a very uh, rough Monday at work. But while it was happening, it was very fun. We uh, left out a cocktail for Elijah for Passover. He did not show up. Son of a bitch. So drank the cocktail myself. Not going to waste it. There you go. That's now right. who's Elijah? Yeah. Uh, oldest one. I know it's an old joke, but it's my favorite Passover joke. Um, you know what? Maybe if you put out better wine, you'd show up. Old joke. <laughs> um, I, I like doing the show, and I like you, and I'm glad you're doing well. I'm sorry about your tooth. Thanks, man. It all worked out. It did. Well, it's working out. You still have work to do. It's working right? out. I have phase three. Yeah. That's the easy part. Yep. So. Next week, no teeth problems and probably no COVID. How about that for a show? <laughs>